Hello everybody, my name is Pierce Horvath, and on behalf of Dead Scared Entertainment, I am glad to have you watching this video today. Today we will be illustrating this piece of Sabrina Spellman as from the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina from Netflix. And I'm so glad that this is the first piece that I'm going to be doing a voiceover for because this particular character from this particular show has been a key inspiration into what has made Dead Scared Entertainment what it is and what it's going to be. And I'm so excited to get into this with you. So let's get started. Now, if you decide to follow along with this, I suggest either if you are going to be doing this digitally or you're going to be doing this on actual paper, work light in the beginning. And then eventually, once you are happy with your lines, definitely go ahead and darken up the lines. And obviously, if you're going to color this in. You could be a little bit more cognizant of your palette and whatever you decide to choose. Again, if you're even just watching this just for the sake of entertainment, just follow along as best you could and enjoy the fact that my mouth is still going. I'm surprised I could even still speak. So to get this started, I kind of went ahead and based off of a rough thumbnail I did in my sketchbook, I kind of roughed out the idea of her. First, it was actually like her hands over this cauldron originally, but then I said, eh, it's a little too Bela Lugosi, which obviously, if you know my work, is pretty, pretty much baked into everything I do. But at the same time, I wanted to do something a little bit different. And I realized, well, when you're doing witchy witchcraft stuff, you know, witchy witchcraft stuff, some things are like from like your hands like the force darth vader you know something like that or it could even be like now i'm thinking okay yeah looking through a spell book and then eventually that's where you start messing with ingredients and stuff and i said oh yeah cauldron some kind of old looking wood spoon some kind of weird concoction you know hocus pocus style yeah let's do it that's what i went for so once i had that going did that quick little thumbnail that you see now and then eventually what i did was i kind of looked at what the pieces were and i said okay what can i refine and then eventually that's when i started to refine the piece you can see i was already doing this for a good minute and then now i'm just refining some of the details that you're seeing here in the piece like now adding some curls into the hair you know some of the waves hair is always something even now after how many years I've been working in illustration and animation, hair is always something that still fails me for some reason. Because there's either a very real realistic pros that you can take, or you could even find yourself in something a little bit more caricatured, um, stylistic, especially like if you're looking at stuff like um, Aurora's hair from Sleeping Beauty, Stuff like that. It's very hard to decide at times, I find, what style of hair, even though there's different hairstyles, it's like this hair inception thing going on here, what fits for what you're doing. And now I'm resizing the eye. That's something that I love about working digitally is the fact that in a pencil sketch, you're not tied down, but there's moments where it's like you really like something, but even if it just needs a nudge left to the or to the right, immediately you have to redraw it and then you lose the spark of whatever you drew. And that's why I primarily work digitally these days because it allows me to work quicker and save the things that are working. But then it also gives me a chance to look at the things that aren't and then refine those. Now I'm already moving into the ink because with me, I generally allow for a lot of the color to speak for the tone and flushing out forms, especially in this particular style. I mean, it's very comic book-esque and that's what I like about it is that, I mean, Sabrina coming from the comics, you know, I mean, she was coming from the Archie series as kind of like one of those 
uh, special guest instances back in the 60s, um, I wanted to bring some of that back around to kind of remind everybody that, you know, this character isn't just like somebody who just popped up on television one day and boom, she's a pop culture icon. The idea here is that she is from the comics and also this is my signature style. I kind of work with the thicker ink line, very reminiscent of the 50s, 60s UPA style that I also love and a lot of my animation work is done in. And like now, I mean this is a speed through. This whole th thing took me over four hours, probably around closer to five, almost six to be honest, just because there's a lot of sitting back, checking things. Um, even like now, a good thing that I suggest if you are interested in becoming an artist to any extent, even a musician, take a second away from your work. You know, go do something else, whatever that may be. Whatever you feel helps you remove your head from the space of creativity for a little bit. And then come back to whatever you worked on and look at it from a critical eye to see what's working, what isn't. Like in this case, I know for a fact I took a minute away from Sabrina and I noticed that the head was a little too tiny because I know that the hand is coming closer to us in this instance she's kind of like leaning forward here but i knew something was up and even though i really liked the way the neck was sitting on the body and like you know in the whole composition i'm like you know what those are two easy lines to get in and even when like creating this cauldron here i wasn't going for perfection because again when you're doing something that's a little bit more cartoony a little bit more comic book guess you can get away with certain little I'll call it stylistic choices and then if you notice what I did here is I flipped the picture horizontally now what you can do is if you're working on paper you could flip it over flip the paper over and hold it up to a light or even stand next or stand in front of a mirror and look at the picture from there and that'll give you a chance to look at your piece from a different view and subjectively say okay this is working this isn't now another thing i did was this show in particular had an amazing color palette especially in the first two seasons the third and the fourth were nice don't get me wrong but the first and second seasons were really the highlight of the show and if you are a chaos fan chilling Adventures of Sabrina fan, you know that the best of the show came from the first and second seasons. Third and fourth, I mean, I don't know what happened, but Roberto Aguirre Sacasa, Netflix, and that writing team, I don't know what you guys were doing. I still enjoyed it, not going to not gonna completely bash it here, but hey, there was something that was up. And you guys had a lot of great material to work with that you were building up in the first and second season. Honestly, I think that whole plot from the first and second season with the whole uh, what's her purpose in the mix of all this diabolical stuff, that, that was an amazing plot right there. And we should have definitely seen that drawn out just a little bit more. But then honestly, it just after the second season, just things went bleh. And again, I understand that there's multiple different versions of spirituality and it was a great way to showcase that, well, there's more to this world than just, I'm guessing, Christian beliefs, because that's the majority of what this show is based off. And honestly, if you look at a lot of Roberto Aguirre Sacasa's work, it all, to some extent, comes back to Christianity in specifics like uh, Catholicism. And me being Catholic, it is interesting and I find it a little, I find it heartwarming because the fact is a lot of media today tries to take religion or at least more personal beliefs like that, touchy subjects like that, out of their storylines. But I noticed that a great deal of what makes up a person's daily activities is things like their religious practice their spiritual beliefs so this is why when we had uh the chilling of a 
Ventures of Sabrina go in and talk about witchcraft from a more personal point of view and how that affects an everyday situation and kind of like now this whole idea of a dark baptism sort of in a sense mimicking like the reverse version of confirmation and obviously they did theirs a lot spookier and it's even crazier in the comics in my opinion which i feel the comics also are a lot darker uh the original comics that the show was based off of um yeah this was a, a chance to really get to see what this character and her family and this whole world how the daily beliefs and spirituality affect them and how something that normally we don't talk about in mainstream media can become a huge like playing ground for an amazing plot line and now this is where the picture starts to come alive i just went in and laid in some basic flat colors Now's when I'm playing with the lighting and I'm purposely picking this very neon green because I know that it, again, in a natural setting, this would probably be way more subdued. But in this case, I'm, I want to play this up. Again, this is a comic book-esque style illustration. This is something that is supposed to really just give you a, a, just a mood. It's supposed to be very moody because if you look at a lot of the shots, that we're given in the chilling adventures of sabrina i'm gonna be saying that a lot so get used to that coming out of my mouth i'm surprised that i'm still able to use my mouth but um it's very moody even like now if you look at like the focus like there's a lot of blurred edges around everything with the exception of like maybe like a character or a particular s subject or an object the cinematography i think was very beautiful in the show and really mimics this sort of dreamlike out of body experience that one could be experiencing when in certain situations that the show takes us in cool stuff really cool stuff and now i'm just going in again i'm being very selective with where i'm putting this light i'm not necessarily trying to have everything be touched with this eerie green because in a lot of cases, less is more. And if you really think back even to like the, the comics back from the 50s, 60s, 70s, the majority of color that you see has one dimension. It's just flat. It's just enough to essentially place the color, place the mood, or at least help us distinguish a character from another and the background. That was it. And in this case, I'm trying to do the same thing here uh, based off of the limited palette that I placed in and make the best of it. Now, I use this particular brush that Adobe has in their Mega Pack. It's a part of their FX box. I think that's what it's called. I'll try and remember to place a link to this afterward to their Mega Box. But this particular brush... I use on almost all of my pieces this grain brush because it just has this very it's a very soft almost like an airbrush type tone that it gives everything but also it's very cinematic so like if you the way I see it it's almost like film grain and a lot of my work I in a lot of my work what I like to do is play that line between obviously we know it's an illustration but between illustration and almost like a film still because a lot of my work because working in animation has me looking at a lot of movies as well as a lot of comic books and picture books and just a whole lot of stuff so if you're not pulling inspiration from multiple avenues you're basically pigeonholing yourself if you're only sticking to one or two. Make sure you're grabbing from a whole bunch of different things, different art styles from different countries, different timelines, different periods. Um, and even take some time to look at the art that you really don't enjoy and try to 
analyze why you don't like it. Because in the end, knowing what you don't like will help you quicker find the things you do. So for me, what I realize is I really don't like when artists go super duper realistic with their work, like hyper realism, because as it is, and it's, it shows a great level of technical skill at the same time. It takes away the expression. It's more or less you are using your creativity to mimic what a camera does with a click, which again is appealing. Don't get me wrong, but you can do so much more with the marks that you're making and with that level of skill. And if you can go and you can create realistic renderings of textures and skins and whatever it may be, show me something that without your hand and your mind, I can never see. That's the magic of, in my opinion, an art. Show me or present to me something that I've never experienced before. And by doing so, that gives me a window into your mind and to your beliefs and what you're trying to give me as an audience. That's the best thing you can do as an artist. And once you start thinking that way about your art and how you are presenting that to the public or to even like now your little close friends or whoever it is that you show your work to. Once you think about it in that frame, you notice that a lot of that guessing that you find and well, oh, what should I do? What should I draw? Even though it still is a pressure on itself, um, it starts to, to flesh its way because it becomes more of an avenue of your own creativity. Back to actually talking about the piece at hand. So eyes are always the focal point of any character centric piece. So make sure if there is any part of your illustration that you have 98 to 100 percent down, it's the eyes because that's the first thing that's going to register. And that's why if you notice I'm in here and I'm actually getting very detailed with the way that the light is playing on the pupils and on the cornea. And even like now, I usually don't go this detailed by adding in like, you know, some of like the striations in her eyes. Like I even went and I made sure I looked up her eye color. I'm like, wait, what color does Karen and Shipka's eyes? What is it? And sure enough, I'm like, oh, she's got brown eyes. And I'm over here thinking she's had blue this whole time. I don't know. Maybe I'm over here. One of those, another one of those guys who idealizes a girl with blue eyes. I mean, we all do to some extent, you know, but... In this case, she's got very pretty brown eyes. Isn't that a song? I feel like that's a song. Let me know if that's a song. It's gotta be a song. Anyways, now I'm going in and I'm refining some of these highlights here. And this is really, from this point, it's a matter of seeing how light plays on this whole image and how I want to either make it really stark, like in the case of these eyebrows here, or if I want to soften it towards the chin like I am here. And like now I looked even, like I even noticed here when I was messing with the headband, it's not as deep as I want it to be because again, her headband's straight black. So I don't want there to be any leading up into the headband that kind of like brings this sort of interest this visual interest because of the simple fact that we're trying to keep her face and what's in the cauldron uh the focal point and that's another very important thing about working in illustration or any creative matter think about the areas that you want your viewer to focus on and place the highest amount of contrast in those areas. That's why you see how the 
space in her eye socket is a nice neon green. And then that's followed right by the thickness of the black of her eyelashes. Right there, you're getting a great sense of contrast, as well as even in her eyes itself, you know, like the highlights and the blackness of her pupil. And if you notice, if you would squint your eyes, her white hair and then the redness of her skin also acts as a great amount of contrast. So it's almost like almost like a spiral you know like those black and white spirals you see like in the hypnotizing the hypnotist stuff that's what we're creating here is a visual sort of subconscious hypnotic swirl that leads you into the eyes because again we're trying to make sure that you get the mood second hand but we know that Sabrina is the focal point firsthand. And then now I'm going in and I'm placing in the, the, the font for the little saying that actually helped me ins helped inspire the idea for the whole piece in general, which came about after watching her cameo on Riverdale recently or Rivervale because now it's been that five special uh, event that's been going on and that's going to be ending pretty soon now the last one's coming up and then we're going to go back to Riverdale I'm surprised at myself that I'm still watching it after everything but we knew us chaos fans all knew she was going to be making some kind of appearance at some point we just didn't know when and especially after Netflix canceling the show even though the third and fourth season really weren't stacking up like the first and second you know we knew that we got gypped out of a great time and a great story and we were just waiting for her to make her return and the good thing is that she will be returning soon in the occult world of sabrina which is going to be a new comic again by the archie team and if I'm not mistaken, yeah, Roberto Aguirre Sacasi is writing that sucker as well. So, if you're a fan of his work, you're a fan of Chaos, obviously you probably are if you're watching this, or if you just happen to be a fan of my work, which I mean, I'm completely flattered if that's the case, and I'm glad you're watching, you'll definitely enjoy this. So, that is the time lapse process of my illustration of Sabrina Spellman from the chilling adventures of Sabrina that you can watch on Netflix. This is not sponsored by Netflix, but hey, if they want to throw me a couple of dollars, that's on them. Again, thank you so much for tuning in, getting a chance to let me bleed your ears out with a thousand one words I have to say. And as always, Thank you so much. So that's it. I'm Pierce Horvat, and you were watching an illustration process brought to you by Dead Scared Entertainment, where terror is our tradition. <laughs> <laughs>